Indian classical music is a genre of music from the Indian subcontinent. It has two major traditions, the North Indian classical music tradition is called Hindustani, while the South Indian expression is called Carnatic. These traditions were not distinct till about the 16th century. Thereon, during the turmoils of Islamic rule period of the Indian subcontinent, the traditions separated and evolved into distinct forms. Hindustani music emphasizes improvisation and exploring all aspects of a raga, while Carnatic performances tend to be short and composition-based. However, the two systems continue to have more common features than differences. The roots of the classical music of India are found in the Vedic literature of Hinduism and the ancient Natyashastra, the classic Sanskrit text on performance arts by Bharata Muni. The 13th century Sanskrit text Sangeeta Ratnakara of Sarangadeva is regarded as the definitive text by both the Hindustani music and the Carnatic music traditions. Indian classical music has two foundational elements, raga and tala. The raga forms the fabric of a melodic structure, while the tala measures the time cycle. The raga gives an artist a palette to build the melody from sounds, while the tala provides them with a creative framework for rhythmic improvisation using time. Indian classical does not have the Western classical concepts such as harmony, counterpoint, chords, or modulation. History The root of music in ancient India are found in the Vedic literature of Hinduism. The earliest Indian thought combined three arts, syllabic recital vadya, mellows gita, and dance As these fields developed, Sangeeta became a distinct genre of art, in a form equivalent to contemporary music. This likely occurred before the time of Yaska c. 500 BCE, since he includes these terms in his Nirukta studies, one of the six Vedanga of ancient Indian tradition. Some of the ancient texts of Hinduism such as the Samaveda c. 1000 BCE are structured entirely to melodic themes, it is sections of Rigveda set to music, the Samaveda is organized into two formats. One part is based on the musical meter, another by the aim of the rituals. The text is written with embedded coding, where swaras octave notes are either shown above or within the text, or the verse is written into parvans not or member in simple words this embedded code of swaras is like the skeleton of the song. The swaras have about twelve different forms and different combinations of these swaras are made to sit under the names of different ragas. The specific code of a song clearly tells us what combination of swaras are present in a specific song. The lyrical part of the song is called Sahityam, and Sahityam is just like singing the swaras all together but using the lyrics of the song. The code in the form of swaras have even the notation of which note to be sung high and which one low. The hymns of Samaveda contain melodic content, form, rhythm and metric organization. This structure is, however, not unique or limited to Samaveda. The Rigveda embeds the musical meter too, without the kind of elaboration found in the Samaveda. For example, the Gayatri mantra contains three metric lines of exactly eight syllables, with an embedded ternary rhythm. In the ancient traditions of Hinduism, two musical genres appeared, namely Gandharva formal, composed, ceremonial music and Gana informal, improvised, entertainment music. The Gandharva music also implied celestial, divine associations, while the Gana also implied singing. The Vedic Sanskrit musical tradition had spread widely in the Indian subcontinent, and according to Raoul, the ancient Tamil classics make it abundantly clear that a cultivated musical tradition existed in South India as early as the last few pre-Christian centuries." The classic Sanskrit text Natya Shastra is at the foundation of the numerous classical music and dance traditions of India. Before Natya Shastra was finalized, the ancient Indian traditions had classified musical instruments into four groups based on their acoustic principle how they work, rather than the material they are made of for example flute which works with gracious in and out flow of air. These four categories are accepted as given and are four separate chapters in the Natya Shastra, one each on stringed instruments cordophones, hollow instruments aerophones, solid instruments idiophones, and covered instruments membranophones. Of these, states Raoul, the idiophone in the form of small bronze symbols were used for tala. Almost the entire chapter of Natyashastra on idiophones, by Bharata, is a theoretical treatise on the system of tala. Time keeping with idiophones was considered a separate function than that of percussion. Membranophones. In the early Indian thought on music theory, the early 13th century Sanskrit text Sanjitaratnakara, literally, 
Ocean of Music and Dance by Sarngadeva patronized by King Sigana of the Yadava dynasty in Maharashtra, mentions and discusses ragas and talas. He identifies seven tala families, then subdivides them into rhythmic ratios, presenting a methodology for improvisation and composition that continues to inspire modern-era Indian musicians. Sanjitaratnakara is one of the most complete historic medieval era Hindu treatises on this subject that has survived into the modern era, that relates to the structure, technique, and reasoning behind ragas and talas. The centrality and significance of music in ancient and early medieval India is also expressed in numerous temple and shrine reliefs, in Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism, such as through the carving of musicians with symbols at the 5th century Pavaya temple sculpture near Gwalior, and the Ellora Caves. Texts The post-Vedic era historical literature relating to Indian classical music has been extensive. The ancient and medieval texts are primarily in Sanskrit Hinduism, but major reviews of music theory, instruments and practice were also composed in regional languages such as Braj, Kannada, Odia, Pali Buddhism, Prakrit Jainism, Tamil and Telugu. While numerous manuscripts have survived into the modern era, many original works on Indian music are believed to be lost, and are known to have existed only because they are quoted and discussed in other manuscripts on classical Indian music. Many of the encyclopedic Puranas contain large chapters on music theory and instruments, such as the Bhagavata Purana, the Markandeya Purana, the Vayu Purana, the Linga Purana, and the Visnudharmatara Purana. The most cited and influential among these texts are the Sama Veda, Natya Shastra, classic treatise on music theory, Gandha Rva, Datilam, Brihadesi, treatise on regional classical music forms, and Sangeeta Ratnakara, definitive text for Carnatic and Hindustani traditions. Most historic music theory texts have been by Hindu scholars. Some classical music texts were also composed by Buddhists and Jain scholars, and in 16th century by Muslim scholars. These are listed in the attached table. <laughs> Major traditions The classical music tradition of the ancient and medieval Indian subcontinent modern Bangladesh, India, Pakistan were a generally integrated system through the 14th century, after which the socio-political turmoil of the Delhi Sultanate era isolated the north from the south. The music traditions of the north and south India were not considered distinct until about the 16th century, but after that the traditions acquired distinct forms. North Indian classical music is called Hindustani, while the South Indian expression is called Carnatic, sometimes spelled as Carnatic. According to Nazir Ali Jairazboy, the North Indian tradition acquired its modern form after the 14th or the 15th century. Indian classical music has historically adopted and evolved with many regional styles, such as the Bengali classical tradition. This openness to ideas led to assimilation of regional folk innovations, as well as influences that arrived from outside the subcontinent. For example, Hindustani music assimilated Arabian and Persian influences. This assimilation of ideas was upon the ancient classical foundations such as raga, tala, matras as well as the musical instruments. For example, the Persian rak is probably a pronunciation of raga. According to Hormoz Farhat, rak has no meaning in modern Persian language, and the concept of raga is unknown in Persia. <laughs> Carnatic music Purandara Dasa was a Hindu composer and musicologist who lived in Hampi of the Vijayanagara Empire. He is considered Pithamaha literally, grandfather of the Carnatic music. Purandara Dasa was a monk and a devotee of the Hindu god Krishna Vishnu, Vital Avatar. He systematized classical Indian music theory and developed exercises for musicians to learn and perfect their art. He traveled widely sharing and teaching his ideas, and influenced numerous South Indian and Maharashtra Bhakti movement musicians. These exercises, his teachings about raga, and his systematic methodology called Saladi Sapta Tala literally, Primordial Seven Talas remains in use in contemporary times. The efforts of Purandara Dasa in the 16th century began the Carnatic style of Indian classical music. Carnatic music, from South India, tends to be more rhythmically intensive and structured than Hindustani music. 
Examples of this are the logical classification of ragas into melicardas, and the use of fixed compositions similar to Western classical music. Carnatic raga elaborations are generally much faster in tempo and shorter than their equivalents in Hindustani music. In addition, accompanists have a much larger role in Carnatic concerts than in Hindustani concerts. Today's typical concert structure was put in place by the vocalist Arayakudi Ramanuja Iyengar. The opening piece is called a varnam, and is a warm-up for the musicians. A devotion and a request for a blessing follows, then a series of interchanges between ragams unmetered melody and thalams the ornamentation, equivalent to the jor. This is intermixed with hymns called krithis. The Pallavi or theme from the raga then follows. Carnatic pieces also have notated lyrical poems that are reproduced as such, possibly with embellishments and treatments according to the performer's ideology. Primary themes include worship, descriptions of temples, philosophy, and nayaka nayika Sanskrit, hero heroine themes. Tyagaraja (1759–1847), Mutuswami Dikshitar (1776–1827), and Sayama Sastri (1762–1827) have been the important historic scholars of Carnatic music. According to Eleanor Zelliot, Tyagaraja is known in the Carnatic tradition as one of its greatest composers, and he everentially acknowledged the influence of Purandara Dasa. Hindustani music It is unclear when the process of differentiation of Hindustani music started. The process may have started in the 14th century courts of the Delhi sultans. However, according to Jairus Boy, the North Indian tradition likely acquired its modern form after the 14th or after the 15th century. The development of Hindustani music reached a peak during the reign of Akbar. During this 16th century period, Tansen studied music and introduced musical innovations. For about the first 60 years of his life, with patronage of the Hindu king Ram Chand of Gwalior, and thereafter performed at the Muslim court of Akbar. Many musicians consider Tansen as the founder of Hindustani music. Tansen's style and innovations inspired many, and many modern gharanas, Hindustani music teaching houses, link themselves to his lineage. The Muslim courts discouraged Sanskrit and encouraged technical music. Such constraints led Hindustani music to evolve in a different way than Carnatic music. Hindustani music style is mainly found in North India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. It exists in four major forms Drupad, Kyle, or Kale, Tarana, and the semi classical Thumri. Drupad is ancient, Kyle evolved from it, Thumri evolved from Kyle. There are three major schools of Thumri Lucknow Gharana, Banaras Gharana, and Punjabi Gharana. These weave in folk music innovations. Tapa is the most folksy, one which likely existed in Rajasthan and Punjab region before it was systematized and integrated into classical music structure. It became popular, with the Bengali musicians developing their own tapa. Kyle is the modern form of Hindustani music, and the term literally means imagination. It is significant because it was the template for Sufi musicians among the Islamic community of India, and Kawals sang their folk songs in the Kyle format. Drupad or Dhruvapad, the ancient form described in the Hindu text Natyashastra, is one of the core forms of classical music found all over the Indian subcontinent. The word comes from Dhruva, which means immovable and permanent. A Drupad has at least four stanzas, called Stayi or Asthayi, Antara, Sanchari, and Aboga. The stayi part is a melody that uses the middle octave's first tetrachord and the lower octave notes. The antara part uses the middle octave's second tetrachord and the higher octave notes. The sanchari part is the development phase, which builds using parts of stayi and antara already played, and it uses melodic material built with all the three octave notes. The aboga is the concluding section, that brings the listener back to the familiar starting point of stayi, albeit with rhythmic variations, with diminished notes like a gentle goodbye, that are ideally mathematical fractions such as dagon half, taigun third, or chowgun fourth. Sometimes a fifth stanza called boga is included. Though usually related to philosophical or bhakti emotional devotion to a god or goddess themes, some drupads were composed to praise kings. Improvisation is of central importance to Hindustani music, and each gharana school tradition has developed its own techniques. At its core, it starts with a standard composition bandish, then expands it in a process called vistar. The improvisation methods have ancient roots, and one of the more common techniques is called alap, which is followed by the jor and hala. 
The ALOP explores possible tonal combinations among other things, JOR explores speed or tempo faster, while HALA explores complex combinations like a fishnet of strokes while keeping the beat patterns. As with Carnatic music, Hindustani music has assimilated various folk tunes. For example, ragas such as Kafi and Jaijaiwanti are based on folk tunes. Topic: <inaudible> Persian and Arab influences. Hindustani music has had Arab and Persian music influences, including the creation of new ragas and the development of instruments such as the sitar and sarad. The nature of these influences are unclear. Scholars have attempted to study Arabic makam also spelled makam of Arabian Peninsula, Turkey and Northern Africa, and Dasga of Iran, to discern the nature and extent. Through the colonial era and until the 1960s, the attempt was to theoretically study ragas and makams and suggested commonalities. Later comparative musicology studies, states Bruno Nettle, a professor of music, have found the similarities between classical Indian music and European music as well, raising the question about the point of similarities and of departures between the different world music systems. One of the earliest known discussions of Persian makam and Indian ragas is by the late 16th century scholar Pundarika Vitala. He states that Persian makams in use in his times had been derived from older Indian ragas or mela, and he specifically maps over a dozen makam. For example, Vitala states that the Hiyas makam was derived from the Asavari raga, and Jangala was derived from the Bangal. In 1941, Haydar Rizvi questioned this and stated that influence was in the other direction. Middle Eastern makams were turned into Indian ragas, such as Zangula makam becoming Jangla raga. According to John Bailey, a professor of ethnomusicology, there is evidence that the traffic of musical ideas were both ways, because Persian records confirm that Indian musicians were a part of the Qajar court in Tehran, an interaction that continued through the 20th century with import of Indian musical instruments in cities such as Herat near Afghanistan-Iran border. <laughs> Features. Classical Indian music is a genre of South Asian music, the other being film, various varieties of pop, regional folk, religious and devotional music. In Indian classical music, the raga and the tala are two foundational elements. The raga forms the fabric of a melodic structure, and the tala keeps the time cycle. Both raga and tala are open frameworks for creativity and allow a very large number of possibilities, however, the tradition considers a few hundred ragas and talas as basic. Raga is intimately related to tala or guidance about division of time, with each unit called a matra beat, and duration between beats. <inaudible> raga A raga is a central concept of Indian music, predominant in its expression. According to Walter Kaufman, though a remarkable and prominent feature of Indian music, a definition of raga cannot be offered in one or two sentences. Raga may be roughly described as a musical entity that includes note intonation, relative duration and order, in a manner similar to how words flexibly form phrases to create an atmosphere of expression. In some cases, certain rules are considered obligatory, in others optional. The raga allows flexibility, where the artist may rely on simple expression, or may add ornamentations yet express the same essential message but evoke a different intensity of mood. A raga has a given set of notes, on a scale, ordered in melodies with musical motifs. A musician playing a raga, states Bruno Nettle, may traditionally use just these notes, but is free to emphasize or improvise certain degrees of the scale. The Indian tradition suggests a certain sequencing of how the musician moves from note to note for each raga, in order for the performance to create a rasa mood, atmosphere, essence, inner feeling that is unique to each raga. A raga can be written on a scale. Theoretically, thousands of raga are possible given five or more notes, but in practical use, the classical Indian tradition has refined and typically relies on several hundred. For most artists, their basic perfected repertoire has some 40 to 50 ragas. Raga in Indian classical music is intimately related to tala or guidance about division of time, with each unit called a matra beat, and duration between beats. A raga is not a tune, because the same raga can yield a very large number of tunes. A raga is not a scale, because many ragas can be based on the same scale. 
Araga, states Bruno Nettle and other music scholars, is a concept similar to mode, something between the domains of tune and scale, and it is best conceptualized as a unique array of melodic features, mapped to and organized for a unique aesthetic sentiment in the listener. The goal of Araga and its artist is to create rasa essence, feeling, atmosphere with music, as classical Indian dance does with performance arts. In the Indian tradition, classical dances are performed with music set to various ragas. Tala According to David Nelson, an ethnomusicology scholar specializing in Carnatic music, a tala in Indian music covers the whole subject of musical meter. Indian music is composed and performed in a metrical framework, a structure of beats that is a tala. A tala measures musical time in Indian music. However, it does not imply a regular repeating accent pattern, instead, its hierarchical arrangement depends on how the musical piece is supposed to be performed. The tala forms the metrical structure that repeats, in a cyclical harmony, from the start to end of any particular song or dance segment, making it conceptually analogous to meters in Western music. However, talas have certain qualitative features that classical European musical meters do not. For example, some talas are much longer than any classical Western meter, such as a framework based on 29 beats whose cycle takes about 45 seconds to complete when performed. Another sophistication in talas is the lack of strong, weak beat composition typical of the traditional European meter. In classical Indian traditions, the tala is not restricted to permutations of strong and weak beats, but its flexibility permits the accent of a beat to be decided by the shape of musical phrase. The most widely used tala in the South Indian system is Adi tala. In the North Indian system, the most common tala is Tintal. In the two major systems of classical Indian music, the first count of any tala is called Sam. Instruments Instruments typically used in Hindustani music include the sitar, sarad, sarbahar, esraj, veena, tanpura, bansuri, shanay, sarangi, violin, santor, pakavaj and tabla. Instruments typically used in Carnatic music include veena, venu, gatuvadiyam, harmonium, murdangam, kanjira, gatam, nadaswaram and violin. Players of the tabla, a type of drum, usually keep the rhythm, an indicator of time in Hindustani music. Another common instrument is the string tanpura, which is played at a steady tone a drone throughout the performance of the raga, and which provides both a point of reference for the musician and a background against which the music stands out. The tuning of the tanpura depends on the raga being performed. The task of playing the tanpura traditionally falls to a student of the soloist. Other instruments for accompaniment include the sarangi and the harmonium. Topic: Notation system. Indian classical music is both elaborate and expressive. Like Western classical music, it divides the octave into twelve semitones of which the seven basic notes are, in ascending tonal order, sa ri ga ma pa dha ni for Hindustani music and sa ri ga ma pa dha ni for Carnatic music, similar to Western music's do re mi fa sa la ti. However, Indian music uses just intonation tuning, unlike some modern Western classical music, which uses the equal temperament tuning system. Also, unlike modern Western classical music, Indian classical music places great emphasis on improvisation. The underlying scale may have four, five, six, or seven tones, called swaras, sometimes spelled as svaras. The svara concept is found in the ancient Natya Shastra in chapter 28. It calls the unit of tonal measurement or audible unit as sruti, with verse 28.21 introducing the musical scale as follows. These seven degrees are shared by both major raga system, that is the North Indian Hindustani and South Indian Carnatic. The solfage sargam is learned in abbreviated form, sa, ri Carnatic or ri Hindustani, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, sa. Of these, the first that is, sa, and the fifth that is, pa are considered anchors that are unalterable, while the remaining have flavors that differs between the two major systems. Contemporary Indian music schools follow notations and classifications see Melikarta and Thought. These are generally based on a flawed but still useful notation system created by Vishnu Narayan Bhatkande. Topic. 
Topic: Reception outside India. According to Yukteswar Kumar, elements of Indian music arrived in China in the 3rd century, such as in the works of Chinese lyrist Li Yanian. Organizations A few of the organizations that promote classical music include Saptic, Sangeet Sangkalp established in 1989. Spick McKay, established in 1977, has more than 500 chapters in India and abroad. Spick McKay claims to hold around 5,000 events every year related to Indian classical music and dance. Music Academy Madras Sangeetha Kalanidhi Award is a well regarded award. See also List of Indian classical music festivals List of ragas in Indian classical music Ragas <laughs>